Something happened, you guys. Baldur's Gate 3 came out. And I didn't play it in August. I didn't play it in September. But October rolled around, and all the girlies on Instagram were talking about this mysterious and sassy pale elf. And so I, of course, very intrigued. Because, you know, this isn't my first rodeo, okay? I've done the obsessed with a vampire thing, okay? I've already done that, I've been there, and I loved it. It's so fun. So, I was like, maybe I'd like Baldur's Gate 3. Hmm. And 160 hours later, bitch, 160 hours? That's a lot of time. One thing I've really been enjoying, like beyond the game, of course, is the fan art. It's so fun. Everybody's so creative and lovely and seems to be having just a blast with all these characters and I want to have fun too, okay? So what am I to do? A little fiber artist. Excuse me? I need this. The inspiration came to me at like no joke 3 a.m. Here it is. Can you see that? I have a bunch of ideas on this note actually um but the main one is a bunch of like almost unintelligible notes on an astarian plushie it says crochet doll because i was embarrassed to write astarian okay i'm not embarrassed anymore this is me this is who i am and if you can't deal with it get out um it came together a lot better and a lot easier than i expected it to i'll tell you right now this is not a quick little day project okay it looks deceiving because it's kind of small um, but the real killer is all of this hair. But of course, I will show you how to do everything step by step. Come on a journey with me. We'll learn together. Maybe we'll have a little fun. Also, just like the kind of base of his body and head, just the shape of him, it's very vague, right? My husband called it pop vinyl coated. Rude, but also true. So yeah, if you're not interested in making Astarian in particular, Follow the pattern and make up your own hair, make up your own clothes, use whatever color you want. You can make pretty much anybody following this basic pattern. So join me as we embark on this kind of treacherous journey, okay? I won't lie to you, it's kind of it's kind of difficult. This is not for the faint of heart, okay? Um, but you can do it, I know you can. She sounds positively demented. I love it. Let's tell her everything. My materials. The yarn. I used 24-7 cotton from Lion Brand. I think it's really nice. It doesn't fray super easily, which is really helpful when you're working with a smaller hook, you know what I'm saying? So I used 24-7 cotton for this guy, but I will be substituting this black color for brown just so that you can see all my stitches. The brown that I use is this KC Essential Cotton in Sequoia. It's fine, it's nice and soft. I, I do prefer the black, honestly, but if you want to use brown, this is the brown that I use for this video. Otherwise, the colors I use in 24-7 cotton are white, ecru, cool gray, and black. These two look quite similar on camera, but they are different enough in person. Obviously, this white is for his shirt and the um, ecru is for his skin. I'm using a 2.7 five millimeter hook. It's quite small. I use a stitch marker. We love a stitch marker because a lot of this is done in the round. Scissors, safety eyes. These are 10 millimeter safety eyes and I painted them with this Essie nail polish in the color. Nailed it. I painted them red. I don't think you have to. I just think it's a nice little touch and I like to use nail polish because it doesn't chip as easily as like acrylic would. You are also going to need a needle and thread. 
What I found to be really helpful, I had I dug this set out of my mom's sewing kit. These like curved needles I find really helpful. And your thread, you're gonna want it to match the hair at least a little bit. We are going to be sewing all of these strands of hair down in place. That being said, you're also gonna need a ton of pins and of course some stuffing. And those are our materials. Now we can get started. Five seconds into this relationship and I already wanted to break up with you. Okay, so now that we have all our materials, we are going to start with the legs. And like I said before, I'm using this brown color. Just for the video, I prefer the color black for his pants, but I want you to be able to see the stitches, so I'm using this brown instead. We are going to start by single crocheting six in a magic ring. One. Two. Three. Four, five, six, and we're gonna pull our tail tight, close that up. Now in round two, we are going to single crochet two in each stitch for a total of 12 stitches by the end. And I always like to keep a stitch marker in that very first stitch so that I don't get lost, because I will get lost. Now I should have 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. For round 3, we are going to single crochet in the back loop only all the way around. So if you're not familiar, the top of every stitch has these two loops that make this kind of V shape. So when we crochet into the back loop, that's exactly what it sounds like. We're not going to go into both loops like we normally do. We're just gonna go into that back one back here. Like so. And we're gonna do that all the way around for round three. And what this does is it creates a really nice and distinct like bottom of the foot. can be a little tricky especially if you have um, a yarn that splits a lot like this one does that's why I prefer the 24 7 cotton Here we go, now I'll flip it right side out because mine is curving in a little bit. And you can kind of see what I mean when I say it creates that really distinct bottom. We have this really nice line from those front loops that we left out. And once it's stuffed, it, it has a really nice flat bottom. So now rounds four through 12 are super easy. We just single crochet all the way around. But that's nine rounds of just single crochet. So I'm gonna do that and I will meet you once I get there. Okay, so there is my round 12 completed. I'm gonna remove my stitch marker here and I am going to slip stitch into the back loop um, and fasten off. Oh my god, <laughs> these scissors are so bad. Ah. 
Okay, fasten off. Great. So, now I have one leg. Obviously, your boy has two legs, so we need to make a second. The second leg is made in the exact same way, but once we reach the end, we are not going to fasten off. Do not fasten off. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make a second leg. I'm not gonna fasten off, and then I will meet you back here once I've done that. You couldn't wait 10 seconds before being an absolute freak. Okay, so here I am with my two little legs. I, like I said, have not tied off um, the second one. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this stitch marker, but I'm not gonna work into this next stitch. I am going to work into this stitch here, the last one I made on the second leg. And I'm just gonna single crochet right into that stitch. And now that stitch that I just made is the one I'm going to place my stitch marker into because this is our new first stitch of the round and we're calling this round 13. Just so you know. And now I'm just gonna single crochet all the way around both legs like normal. Making sure to um, get every stitch. Once you get to this other side here, it gets a little tricky, but just count your stitches um, vigilantly. You should have 24 stitches by the end of round 13. And um, yeah, you'll be you'll be good. So that's my second. Here's stitch number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now I've single crocheted in all of the stitches on this leg, and I will move on to the next. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Perfect. Now, open these legs up. You'll notice there is a bit of a hole here. What I have found is that that hole kind of just disappears as you continue on. I'll show you here. You can't really see it here. It's not noticeable. And if you stuff it right, these legs are gonna wanna stay together anyway. So it's really not noticeable. If it really bothers you, you can take an extra piece of string and stitch it closed, tie it closed, whatever. I have not found that to be necessary. Now for rounds 14 through 18, we're just gonna single crochet around like normal. That's five rounds. So I'll meet you back once I have that all done. Okay, so that for me is round 18 finished. And you can see that like this side is a little higher than this side. So what I like to do is I just like to add five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I slip stitch in the back loop and tie off. And that just kind of moves it over to the side where it's not as noticeable. And that's our little pants done, my friends. Now you can like put away the brown or the black, whatever you're using, because we will be moving on to white next. Also, I would stuff your legs and your butt at this point. So I'm gonna do that right now. I like to stuff them fairly firmly. I don't know, nothing crazy, but I don't like to leave it floppy or anything. Okay, 
All right, that's stuffed enough for now, I think. So, I was wondering if maybe, perhaps, you might be able to, uh... Can you read what's on my damn back? Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our white yarn. And I am going to attach this white yarn at the center back of my guy here, or as close to the center back as I can get. So your front and back should look fairly identical, um, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I have like an ugly stitch or something and I want to hide it and so that will be your deciding factor for like what is the front or the back. If they're identical, great, pick a side and attach at the middle. <laughs> but if they're not, your back should be like the ugly side. So I'm just going to attach right here. That looks pretty close to the middle to me. I'm gonna attach in the back loop with a stitch, slip stitch. Pull that tight. And then I'm going to chain one single crochet into that same stitch right there. Again, in the back loop only for this round. And then I'm going to continue around single crocheting in the back loop only. All right, so that's round one of our shirt. So now for round two, we are going to single crochet five. One, mark that first stitch of the round. Two, three, four, five. And then we are going to single crochet two together and that's a decrease. So to do that, I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up a loop, just like I do normally for a single crochet. But instead of finishing the stitch here, I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch as well, pull up another loop, yarn over, and pull through all the loops on my hook. And that combines those two stitches into one in this row, which decreases the number of stitches we have. Now we're gonna single crochet 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then we're going to decrease again. So insert our hook into the first stitch, pull up a loop, insert our hook into the next stitch, pull up another loop, yarn over, pull through all the loops. And then we're gonna single crochet four. One, two, three, four. And that's the end of round two. Now, rounds three and four, we are going to single crochet around, nice and easy. And I will meet you back with instructions for round five. Okay, I've just completed round four. I'm going to put a little more stuffing in here. Um, definitely stuff as you go because there will come a point where you cannot really get in here anymore and we want to be all stuffed and feeling good before we get to that point. So just stuff as you go. Round five, we're gonna start with a decrease. Here's our first decrease. Put our stitch marker in. And then we are going to single crochet nine. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're gonna decrease again. And then we're going to single crochet seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we are going to decrease one more time. There we go. Now, we're gonna do some color changes to account for um, this like open part of the shirt where we want that flesh color to show. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to find the very middle stitch on the front of our little guy here. And I'm gonna mark it with a stitch marker just for our purposes here. There should be nine stitches in between that decrease that we just made and the mar the stitch that we just marked in the front. So I'm gonna count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's fine. We can fix this. All we're gonna do is we're gonna add a stitch. <laughs> There we go. Now, if you have, say, 11 stitches in between, you're gonna add two stitches. If you only have eight stitches, you'll remove one. You see what I'm saying? Very easy, okay. So now we have adjusted and there are nine stitches open in between the stitch we just made, and the center stitch over here. So now that we're, we've adjusted, we're going to single crochet nine. One. And I'm gonna mark that stitch here, because that is our new first stitch of the round. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now, here is where I'm going to color change to ecru. I am not gonna finish that last of the nine single crochets. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my ecru. I'm going to finish off this stitch with this beige color instead. So I'm just gonna Throw it on my hook here, pull it through. And this will make the top of my next stitch beige. I'm gonna remove this stitch marker. We don't need this stitch marker anymore. That was just to mark our middle. And I'm going to single crochet one in that ecru color and I'm gonna go right over my, my tail here to secure it a bit. And since I'm only crocheting one in this color, I'm not gonna finish it off. I'm gonna switch to white and finish with white. Now pull all your stitches nice and tight and you're golden and good to go. You have that one beige stitch right in the middle. Now I'm going to single crochet nine again. And we should have 19 stitches in this round. If you happen to have more than 19, just decrease at the end. You'll be fine. And there we go. 
there's round six. Now for round seven, it's very similar. I'm going to single crochet eight in white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm not gonna finish off that eighth stitch just like last time. I'm gonna switch to that beige color finish off with the beige and I'm going to single crochet three. One, two, three, and now I'm going to switch back to white, finish that stitch off in white. Oops. Pull that stitch nice and tight and then single crochet eight in white again. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Wonderful. Moving on to round eight. In white, I'm going to decrease and then single crochet two. And then I'm going to do it again. Decrease. And then single crochet two. One, two. And that last one I'm going to finish off with beige. I'm going to finish off with beige. And then in that beige color, I am going to single crochet three. One. three, and then I'm going to finish off in white, and then in white I'm going to single crochet two, one, two, and then decrease, and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to single crochet two, and then decrease. One, to decrease. Now again I'm going to take a moment to stuff the body a little bit more. Make sure all my little tails are hidden away in here. That's good for now, I think. On round nine, I am going to single crochet. One. And then I'm going to decrease. Ugh. Then I'm gonna do that again. Single crochet one. And decrease. I'm finishing off with beige. There we go. And now in that beige color I'm going to single crochet one. Decrease. And single crochet once more. Then I'm going to finish off in white. And I will decrease. And then single crochet. and then decrease again. Now 
Now for me, it does start getting a little tough here. You're working with a pretty narrow uh, little circle here. Just take your time, you'll be fine. There are 10 stitches in this round. Now, moving on to round 10 in white, I'm going to decrease. And then I'm going to single crochet two. One, two, and I'm gonna finish off that second stitch with that beige color, of course. So in beige now, I'm gonna single crochet one Increase in the next stitch. One. Oops. One. Two. Then I'm going to single crochet in the next stitch and finish off with white. So now we have four beige stitches in the middle there. And then I'm going to decrease with white, like so, and single crochet one. Okay, this is last call for stuffing. I can like barely get my little fingers in there um so yeah this is this is your last chance to get any stuffing in there And I do like this part to be quite firm, um, to make a nice stable base for the neck. Excellent. There we go. So in round 11, in white, I'm going to decrease And then single crochet one in white. I'm going to switch over to beige. Single crochet four. One. Two. Switch over to white again and single crochet two. One. Oops. One. Two. And I'm going to finish off this second white stitch in beige and cut the white string because I do not need it anymore because we will be working only in beige for the rest of the neck. Yay! So round 12, I'm gonna single crochet three, working over that white tail to secure it. One, mark it. Two. Next, I decrease. Two. 
just like that and then I'm going to single crochet three again should be seven stitches in here. Now in round 13, right away we're going to decrease again. Mark that first stitch. And then we're going to single crochet around in the last five stitches. One, two, three, four, five. Now we have six stitches in here. Now this does get quite tough because it is so small. Take your time. You want your stitches to be nice and tight um, because we want the neck to be kind of firm because what I prefer to do is have a head that just like pops right on and doesn't need sewn on. It like stays pretty well as long as the neck isn't like super floppy. This was my first prototype and here's my second. The neck is a little longer, a little stiffer, and I think that it works a little bit better. Yeah, so um, if you plan to sew your head on, it is not as important that your neck is nice and tough. Um, but if you just want the kind of head that you can kind of like stick on there and let hang out, then you want your stitches to be really nice and tight and you want it to be fairly firm. So just keep that in mind. Now rounds 14 through 16, so that's three rounds, we're just going to single crochet around and then we're going to fasten off. I like to leave a bit of a long tail so that I can uh, kind of shove that into the neck and make it even firmer. Um, I'll show you how to do that when I when I get there. So yeah, three rounds of single crochets and I'll meet you at the end. <laughs> okay. So that is around 16 done, and like I said, I like to kind of snip off like a long-ish tail. <laughs> Tie it off. And then I kind of use this tail to stuff the neck and shove as much of that as I can in there to make it nice and firm. And honestly, you wouldn't think that works, but it totally does. And you, you don't need like a ton of yarn to do it either, which is kind of nice, but there's like, there's like no way I'm getting polyfill in there, you know? You could try maybe putting like a little dowel in there or something if you want. Report back with your findings, maybe. But yeah, this works fine for me. There is ideally a point where you can't possibly get any more in there. And when that point comes, you just snip off the excess. So yeah, I can't fit this in there, so I just cut it off. Let's keep you cute. Now you have this very gorgeous and wondrous looking 
I uh, like gourd. And I'll roll it a little bit because it's looking a little lumpy. Beautiful gourd. How gorgeous. Gorgeous. Moving on. Now we are going to add some detail to the shirt. A little collar and a little something to accentuate this little V here. So to do that, we are going to use our white uh, slip knot. Get that on the hook. We're gonna attach at the center of the back of the neck in between stitches like so. I'm gonna zoom you in and show you a little better. So the back of the neck, we're gonna find that last row of white, which is about right here. We're gonna insert our hook in between the stitches right there like that. And single crochet. So yeah, we are just going to follow this little V that has been created by um, the color changes that we made. So in between stitches, I'm just going to single crochet down following the edge of those color changes. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to create a neater line for our shirt. See that? That looks so nice. So now we're going to go back up the other side. When I reach the back of the neck where I started, I'm going to slip stitch to that first single crochet. Like so. And then I'm going to slip stitch over to his shoulder. slip stitch I think two more times to get me to that shoulder yeah I think that's a good spot right there so here I'm going to chain one turn and single crochet two into that stitch that I just slip stitched into this is getting very difficult to see, I'm sure. Um, but we'll get there. So I'm single crocheting two. And then I'm going to single crochet two in each stitch until I get to the other side of the shoulder. Now, you might have more or less stitches across the back of your neck than I do, depending on how you, um, you approach this like V shape here. All we really need is for it to look symmetrical. So I'm going to single crochet to about here and then I'm gonna look at it from the front. Maybe I'll need to add a couple. Maybe I'll have to remove one or two. We'll see, we'll kind of approach that when we get there. But for now, I am just going to single crochet two in each stitch across. I 
And I'm also going to single crochet over that tail that I made at the back so that I don't have to weave it in. I think that looks pretty darn symmetrical. Excellent. So here is where I'm going to stop. I'm going to chain one, turn, and then I'm going to single crochet two in this first stitch. One, two, and then one in the next. I'm going to repeat that until I reach the other end of the collar. There we go. Okay, now before I tie off, I'm going to take one final look at it, make sure it's looking fine. Yeah, that's very cute. Oh yeah. I feel perfectly happy tying this off. Now, what I'm going to do to get this, these uh, tails taken care of is I'm just going to like stab my hook through to this side, pull that tail right in there, and out the other side, probably pull some stuffing out too, whatever. Whatever. And then I'm just going to cut it super close to the body. Stab any stuffing that came out right back in there. There we go. And I'm going to weave this other tail in. Get it up close to the neck and then do the same thing for this tail. If you want to uh, sew that down, you can. I've found that it doesn't really matter. Once the head goes on, it'll be fine. It'll lay nice. So yeah, now we move on to arms. I'm not gonna lie to you, this wasn't even the hardest part, so. <laughs> Buckle up. The arms are easy though, so don't worry about that. Let's lay on hands. Okay, now the arms. The arms are so blessedly easy. We are going to start with our beige color. And as we have been doing lately, we are going to single crochet six into a magic ring. One, two, Close that up. 
Make sure it doesn't get flipped inside out. Mine always do. I don't really know why. It's just the way it is, I guess. Now, for round six, I'm going to switch to white. You can cut the end of the beige. The rest of the arm will be worked in white. So for round six, in white, I'm going to increase and then single crochet one. Repeat that around. Increase. Single crochet one. Increase. Single crochet one. There we go. Now, round seven through twelve, we are just going to single crochet around nine stitches. That's the end of round 12. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've, I tucked in all of my tails into the little like puff of the sleeve. That's all the stuffing really that these arms need and they honestly don't even need that. But I'm going to fold it closed like this and I'm going to go through the stitches on this side and straight through the stitches on the other as well to seal it up. And I'm just going to single crochet them closed all the way down. I have four stitches, um, though it doesn't really matter as long as it looks okay. And there we go. And I'm going to cut that with a tail long enough to sew it onto the body, which really does not need to be that long um, and tie off. And that's that. And then I'm going to make a second arm and I will meet you back to sew them on. Now I'm going to sew this guy's arms on with my darning needle. I'm just gonna go two rows underneath the collar. One, two. I'm gonna sew them on right about here. Cute. If you would like, you can secure them a little bit more by just going through the back here, right out there. Just with one stitch, I have found that's plenty to keep it nice and secure. Excellent. So repeat that on the other side and Henry, jeez. Repeat that on the other side and weave in your ends. Now, the body's done. That should feel pretty good. You can put this to the side. We are not going to need this for a while. And we're gonna move on to the head. How exciting. On my honor, the only thing on my mind is depraved carnal lust. So to make the head, we're gonna start by pulling out our beige colored yarn. 
we're basically just gonna make a big circle, a nice sphere. We are going to start with a magic ring. We're gonna single crochet six in our magic ring. Who could have guessed it? Pull that bad boy closed. Now, round two, we're going to increase in each stitch. And we will have 12 stitches by the end. Now round three, we are going to increase in the first stitch, one, two, and then single crochet in the next, repeat that around, increasing and then single crocheting. All the way around until we have 18 stitches. Now round four, we are going to increase in the first. increase and then single crochet in the each of the next two stitches one two then repeat that around until we have 24 stitches Now for round five, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna increase in the first stitch. And then single crochet in the next two, repeating that around, and that will bring us to 32 stitches in round five. Now, round six, we are going to increase in the first stitch. Increase. And then we are going to single crochet in the next three stitches. We're gonna repeat that around until we have 40 stitches. What the goddamn? There. Okay. Rounds seven through 15 are just single crochets all the way around. That's nine rounds. I'm gonna do that and I will meet you back with instructions for round 16.
So I have just finished round 15 and here I am going to insert my safety eyes. So to make my safety eyes, like I said before, I just painted them with some nail polish. I stuck them into this little cardboard piece so that I could handle them a little easier and let them dry. Yeah, that's it. I'm sure you can find red safety eyes if you would like, but I had nail polish, so why not? So I'm gonna insert these between rows 11 and 12. So I'm gonna find that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I'm gonna stick that there. And then I keep about eight stitches visible in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. right? I'd say that looks right. So again, eight stitches in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Now I'm going to stick the backs on. So for round 16, we're going to decrease first decrease and then single crochet 3 1 2 Three, and we're going to repeat that around, decrease, one, two, three, until we have 32 stitches. Now for round 17, we're going to decrease and single crochet two in between the decreases. So there's our first decrease. Single crochet two. One. Two. We're going to repeat that around until we have 24 stitches. Now before starting round 18, I like to stuff the head a little bit. You don't have to stuff the head super firmly, um, just enough to help it hold its shape a little bit. And then round 18, we are going to decrease. Oops and single crochet in the next stitch, repeating that pattern around until there are 16 stitches. So now moving on to our final row of the head, round 19, we are going to decrease eight times um, and that finishes the base of this head.
All right, then I'm going to slip stitch the next stitch and fasten off. There is no need to leave a long tail here unless you do want to tie or you do want to sew your head on. I won't be, so I'm just going to stick this tail in here. She still doesn't have the best hair in the camp. Now, you might feel like you're almost done. But you're not. Because the hair is nightmarish and hellish and horrible. But it is so worth it. Okay, first we need to map out where our hair is going to be. So I like to do this by grabbing a pencil. Where'd my pencil go? Here it is. I'm gonna use my pencil to kind of map where I want all of my hair to go. I like to start with a little widow's peak. I count one, two, three above like where the eyes are. So this is that first row above the eyes, the second, the third. And I think here on this fourth is where I'm gonna, right in the middle, is where I'm gonna put that widow's peak. And I'm going to go around this way, kind of marking this in-between space right here on both sides to create the hairline. You can use a marker if you want. Um, I feel good about using the pencil because I know that I can get most of the pencil out if I make a mistake. Okay, about two stitches past the eye. One, two. So about here. Mark that. One, two, up. Mark that. I go down a bit diagonally until I reach that eye. So until about here. Maybe like that. Then I make a little notch I go back up creating a little space for the ear right here do that on the other side as well doesn't look like that okay so there are one two three one two three about even. I'll say it does. Create that notch again. Then I'm going to go down diagonally again. Until I reach this round where the decreases start. Same thing on the other side, right to that round where the decreases start. And then I connect them on the back. Okay. 
And a lot of the stuff right near the edge is going to be covered up by the hair anyway. The only place where it matters really that we have nice clean lines is in the front because a lot of this hair in the front is pulled back. But you can see on the sides here, um, it does cover up that edge so you won't see like a clear line and a lot of your pencil marks are going to be covered up. <laughs> of course! What fun! I'm going to fucking kill you. So now that that's all mapped out and we have a plan, we are going to start with our cool gray now. I'm gonna make a slip knot. Get that on our hook. And we start in the back like this. And if you remember, we did something very similar for our collar where we attached in between these stitches here like this. So we start on the outside, go right in between those stitches like that. I'm going to attach with a slip stitch. Sorry about that sound. I am located right next to the furnace and I don't want to be cold. So I've attached with a slip stitch and I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to slip stitch in the second chain from my hook then into the third and then in the next stitch attached to the head I'm going to slip stitch in between right there and then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch on the head And I'm going to keep repeating that until I have reached the other end of the back bottom of the hairline. So to right here, chain three, slip stitch down. Oops. Slip stitch on the head. Slip stitch on the head again. Chain three. All the way across. So now I have finished that, that first little row of these strange looking little hairs and I have slip stitched into the next stitch on the head. Um, and it's time for me to move up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip stitch following that line that I made into the row above. And I'm going to, again, chain three. Oops. Slip stitch down. And then slip stitch into the head twice. I'm going to do the same thing for the second row of hair. Slip stitch to the head. Chain three, slip stitch down. So I'm going to do that for the rest of this row and I will meet you back at the end. Okay, so I'm at the end of row two. I'm again going to slip stitch 
into the next row following that line that I made. And both rows three and four are worked the exact same way as rows one and two, but instead of chaining three, we're gonna chain four. So here I have slip stitch into the next row, chaining one, two, three, four, slip stitch three down, one, two, three, and then I'm going to start slip stitching back across the back of the head once again. Chain one, two, three, four, slip stitch one, two, three, and do that all the way across for the remainder of row three and then also for row four. So I'm gonna do that and I'll meet you back with instructions for row five. Okay, now row five has worked a little bit differently. We are going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then starting in the second chain from the hook, we are going to single crochet two in each chain down. So one, two, in the first chain, one, two, in the second chain, Third chain and then one, two, and that last chain. And you can see that this forms the sweetest little curl. So now, after we've done that, we're going to skip the next stitch on the head. So before we were not skipping any. Now we're gonna skip that next stitch slip stitch into the one after that and then slip stitch into the stitch after that okay and then we chain five again single crochet two in each chain starting with the second from the hook all the way down to the other end. So I've reached the end of row five and I have run into my first little sideburn here. And what I do here is I just slip stitch down and then back up um, to the row that I was just working on. <laughs>
So there's my little sideburn. And you might run into your sideburns in a different place than I have. It just kind of depends on how you mapped your stuff out in the beginning. Yours does not have to look exactly like mine. There is so much hair on this thing that I, if you're off by like a row or a, a few stitches, like it's, it's really not gonna matter. Just, just follow your guide and trust your gut. Anyway, for round six, you slip stitch into the correct row and then we are going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And then we are going to do the same thing as we did in round five. We are going to single crochet two in each chain, starting with the second from the hook. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna work all the way to the other side and um, keeping in mind our side burns when we reach them. Just marking those out with a little slip stitch once we get there. Look at these darling little curls. You might see the gaps in between the rows here and be feeling a little like... Beth, what the fuck? But don't worry, um, this will look like a mess until it's done, basically. Just keep going, let the curls do what they're doing. We will have a chance to like arrange them and sew them down, so don't worry about it. And again, just like round five, we are going to skip the first stitch, slip stitch into the next, and then slip stitch into the next stitch after that. Then continue to make those precious, darling little curls. Okay, I just did my little sideburn detail on the other side. Row seven, we're gonna chain six, just like in row six. Two, three, four, five, six. We're gonna do this part a little differently. We're gonna single crochet two in the second chain from the hook. One, two, and then in the next chain, we're gonna single crochet one. We're gonna repeat that, single crochet two in the next. One, two, and then one, and one after that. Then we have one chain left over and we will single crochet two into there. One, two. Then again, just like last time, we're gonna skip the next stitch on the head, slip stitch into the one after that. There we are. And slip stitch once more. And again, chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six, Single crochet two, one, two, and then one, alternating all the way down. Now we're doing this a little differently 
to make a little bit of a looser curl. You see these ones are really tight. This one is a bit more open. We want these curls to be a little bit looser and a little bit more malleable because the higher we get on here, the more we are going to want to um, place these exactly where we want them, exactly the way we want them to lay, and then we're gonna sew them down. So it's helpful if they're a little more um, malleable, because see, we can twist this up and make it just as tight a curl as this one in the previous row, right? But we also have the option to lay it a bit flatter, which can benefit us later on, just that versatility, so. That's why we're doing it this way. I'm gonna continue that row and I will meet you back with instructions for row eight when I get there. Now for row eight, I have slip stitched into the row that I meant to be working in. I'm going to um, chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then just like in the last row, I'm going to single crochet two in the second chain from the hook and then one in the chain after that. And then repeat that alternating between two single crochets and one all the way down to the bottom. Skip the next stitch, slip stitch into the one after that, as usual. Slip stitch again. Oops. And then repeat chain nine, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, single crochet two in the second chain from hook, and then single crochet one in the next. I'm gonna repeat that until the end. I believe this will be the last row where I'm working back and forth. And in the next row, I'm gonna start working in rounds until I get to the center. So I will meet you back once I get to that point. Okay, now I'm on row nine. I have slip stitched um, into the row I'm working in, and it's the same as the last row, where I'm gonna chain nine, six, seven, eight, nine, Single crochet two into the second chain from my hook. One, two, single crochet one into the next, and alternate all the way down. Um, and starting here, I'm going to be working in rounds rather than rows. So, I'm gonna keep going around, and once I get here, I'm just gonna continue on down the forehead. When I get here, I'm just gonna like slip stitch a little widow's peak and continue on my way. And once I get back here again, 
I am going to change it up a little bit. So I will, I'll meet you here for the widow's peak and then here to show you how to continue on. I have done my first round all the way around the head. And once I get past the forehead, I am going to start adding one more slip stitch on the head in between every strand of hair. So before we would skip a stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch again, and then um, chain nine for another strand of hair. But now we're gonna add one more chain in between just because I have found if we don't, the, it gets a little crowded. He doesn't need that much hair. <laughs> so that's the only change we're making. Otherwise, it's totally the same. Just continue um, chaining nine, single crocheting two, and then single crocheting one in the next stitch all the way around until you reach the tippy top and then you're done, you can tie off. I will meet you there. And then we'll we'll make our next move. Oh, was I using the wrong one? Oh, I was using, I kept using the, oh, I kept using the wrong one, bro. <laughs> That's a... Oh, you're serious. Okay, so now he looks like this. Very adorable in his own right, but also not the vibe. So, this is where our pins come into play. We're going to take every little bit of hair that we want moved, and we're going to arrange it just right. <laughs> so that um, we can then go through and sew everything down. You're gonna use a lot of pins, just so you know. And um, honestly, this part I find kind of fun and relaxing. Um, just take your time, play around with the hair. It's fun! Do be careful, however. I have found that it's super easy to like lose your pins in here because there's so much hair. And I definitely stabbed myself a whole lot because I just lost track of pins in this mess of curls. I find it also quite helpful to start in the back and then kind of like make my way towards the front so that I can lay everything kind of down on top of itself. I also think it's helpful to have a reference photo on hand because he does have kind of a particular swoop to his hair. Pull up a picture that you can use for reference. That doesn't really matter until you get more towards the front of the head. And then of course, I like to sew the hair down. I think that makes it the most durable. I have not tried hot glue, but I am kind of curious. So if you try hot glue, let me know how it goes for you. And maybe I'll change up my method because it seems a whole hell of a lot easier. <laughs> Grab some stitch markers really quick. I just had one. That's okay. I also like to keep these little pieces, the ones closest to the sideburn little things that we made. Um, I like to keep those little pieces left out because they are right in front of the ear and I like to sew the ears on before 
I secured these little pieces down just so that I can arrange them to be around the ear rather than have to kind of fight to get the ear around the, these little pieces of hair. So just these little two pieces. I like to put a stitch mar marker on them so I remember not to sew them down. Um, that's that. <laughs> So looking at this guy for reference because I really like how his hair turned out. The only thing was, was when I actually sewed everything down, I ended up like making my stitches too tight or something and it really squished the hair down. So I think that's something I'm going to try to avoid doing this time and just have nice loose little stitches. But you can see here how I kind of tried my best to make the hair part around here and kind of flop over this way um a nice swoop here and a little swirl here so about here i'm just gonna try to pull this hair kind of back straight rather than letting it curl up if that makes sense and this again is why it's really nice to have these um these curls be a little bit more malleable and another thing is if it's not looking right and you're just really fighting it just pin it somewhere and come back to it later there's no need to get it completely perfect on your first go because we're not sewing anything down so nothing's staying here forever I'm also this time going to try to keep more ends loose like you see with these longer pieces here, I've pinned it closer to the base and I'm going to see what it's like leaving these ends to kind of curl on their own and do what they want. Okay, turned out pretty cute. I have a, a few little loose curly bits that I think give it a lot of character. So now I'm just gonna sew everything down. Careful not to miss anything, but more careful to not 
squish it. We've got a lot of good things going on here. We so painstakingly arranged all of these little curls. And like I said with this guy, I love how he turned out, but I I really did like just go too crazy with the, the stitches, I think. And I ended up really crushing, <laughs> crushing his hair, which is unfortunate. Cause I really, I, I don't know. I think the layout is so, so darling. But anyway, that's fine. I think I do like this one a little bit more. I like this little swoop that I was able to get right there. And this one right here, oh please, cute, so cute. I'm gonna be using a sewing needle and just some embroidery floss, I think. Something that matches the hair pretty well. And I'm gonna take my time and make sure I get all those little details nailed out just the way I want them. <sighs> okay, that's gonna take forever, so. Stay strong, darling. I just finished sewing the hair down on this guy here. This is the one that I just made and this is my original one and comparing the two, I do like the way this one turned out quite a bit more, especially in the back. I feel like this just looks a lot nicer. Well, this one, my stitching was so tight that it kind of crushed a lot of the curls here. Where this one, you can still see a lot of the curls and I did also leave a lot more out, just kind of loose. I really secured everything here. I did not leave anything out. That's an improvement and that's a good thing. Um, we love to see it. So next, I'm gonna show you how to make these ears. I'm all pointy ears, my love. Okay, so the ears are very easy. Make two of them. There are only two rounds. 
We're going to start by single crocheting six into a magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to pull it closed. Now in the first stitch we are going to single crochet in the first stitch of round two we're going to single crochet and double crochet in that same stitch okay single crochet and double crochet in one stitch then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. I'm going to slip stitch into the first chain that I made. And then in the next stitch, I'm going to double crochet and single crochet. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And fasten off and that's my little ear how cute so again make two of those leave a tail long enough to sew them onto the head but there's not a lot of sewing to do here so it doesn't need to be that long now we have our ears made and it is time to sew them onto the side of the head I'm gonna take a darning needle I'm gonna use the tail from the center of the ear first to sew it on. I have these little hairs that I left out. They still have the stitch markers in there. Um, I'm going to move that to the side. I'm going to sew the ear on right here. Go back through the other side of the ear. Decide if I like that placement or not. I think I do. So go back through and just make sure that is good and secure on there. And I'm not gonna secure these ends down because I want them to kind of poke out through the hair. I am going to make sure it's good and secure at the bottom. And I'm going to tie this really simple knot. the tail I have left over. Then I'm going to use my crochet hook to just pull those tails through um, to be inside the head. There we go. Pull them through and then tuck them away. Be careful because if you missed any pins in the hair, like I definitely have, um, you'll stab your finger. So be careful because sometimes even when you're like so sure that you got every pin out, there's one hiding away. They're really easy to miss. So. And then we can take our stitch marker off and you can do one of two things here you can either leave this hair be or you can like find a nice little spot for it and sew it down I'm gonna let it hang loose um, personally and yeah repeat that on the other side get the other ear on and you're good to go I will meet you for the next part go for the neck boo Okay, so 
at this point, he's pretty much done. Take our body, remember her, and just kind of work the head onto there. That You want the head to be stuffed enough, but not too much, because you still need room for the neck to go in here. And it like, it stays on pretty well. His head's floppy, He's his head is quite heavy because of all this hair. But yeah, if you want to sew the neck on, feel free, but it's, I don't think it's necessary. And it's fun, cause like, I don't know, maybe you wanna embroider like a facial expression on here, and then you can like swap out heads. Or you can make a different body with like different clothes on and you can swap the head off. So many options here, but yeah, if you want it to just stay on, you can totally just sew it right onto the neck there and you'll be good to go. So, that's that. There he is. The journey's over, guys. <gasps> we did it. Yay. Oh, bravo. Encore. Okay, sorry if you can hear my furnace in the background. The furnace is literally, like, right over there. And it's really cold out. There he is, man of the hour. What do you have to say? fascinating stuff folks what a journey we just went on together um i hope you did not have any trouble if you did please feel free to sound off in the comments kindly and i will help you or you can send me an email or like dm me on instagram or something dming me on instagram is the least likely way to get my attention though i hope you love your little astarian plushie i have two of them now so I might list one online, but I, I don't see myself making a ton more of these, but if you would like to commission one, you can always fill out the commission form on my website. Do not distribute this pattern as your own, guys. That's not nice. This is my pattern. I wrote it. If you have any more, like, specifically Baldur's Gate 3 related recommendations, I'm super down. Follow me on Instagram for updates and such. I, it feels good to be back. Moving forward, I've been doing a lot of thinking about what I want to do on this channel and how I can make posting regularly more sustainable for me. Writing patterns every week is like not possible. So I think maybe once a month I drop a whole pattern. If I'm able to upload more, maybe I'll do some like craft vlog things. Because guys, I do a lot more than crochet. I like to draw, I like to paint, I sew, I like to do embroidery. I'll try anything. Keep an eye out for that. If you liked this video, please like it. Subscribe so you'll see the next one. I'll see you later, I hope. Goodbye.